everybody, and welcome back to another video brought to you by us at Paradise on Pennies. Um, I'm Heather, and I'll be talking to you today about the uh, pennies part of our Paradise on Pennies. Uh, we spend a lot of time showing you the Paradise part and all the awesome places that we go and travel to now that we live on the road full time. And today, again, like I said, I'll be talking to you about the pennies part of that, or the budget side of it. Um, really excited to bring this video to you guys because this is the heart of how we do what we do. It's one of the main questions we get from people when we tell them that we live on the road is how do you afford to live on the road full time and uh, not work as much as we work because that's one thing we do is, you know, we don't work full time jobs. We try to uh, take advantage of the ability to travel and learn and explore um, without being tied to uh, Wi-Fi somewhere or without being tied to certain locations or an office and, and things like that. That's the main advantage uh, to living on the road. And it's also the part that makes what we do quite unique compared to just anyone that lives on the road because there's lots of different ways you can do it. And again, our specific focus here on the channel is to show you guys how you can do it on a budget. So. I believe this is very valuable to people that are looking to live on the road and really want to know how to do it on a budget. This is the video that will show you how we do it. Um, not only will I be going through um, a comparison, so I want to show you guys how you go from those expenses in the traditional lifestyle and how you can get rid of some of those to how you can live on the road in different forms and it can be a bit more costly versus how we do it and how we have chewed down our expenses in order to do it the way we are and to do it hopefully for a lifetime. So without further ado, let's get started and eventually I'll even reveal our own budget and we're, uh, bear with me, we're going to be looking at some hard numbers. We're gonna be crunching some numbers but trust me, the details are totally worth watching through because you'll really get to see exactly how we make it work. So bear with me, join along, and I hope this is really valuable to some of you out there because we really want to get you guys out on the road too, just like us. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the cost of living on the road. And obviously this is going to differ quite a bit depending on the way you're living. So at the top here, I'm going to put some labels for living styles, which will include traditional living, your typical uh, house, garage, car, um, things of that nature. And then I will compare the traditional living expenses and cost to a couple of forms of living on the road. So, one of those will be the RV, that's kind of the more luxurious form of living on the road, and you typically have a car you pull behind, so we'll look at those various expenses. And then we'll also throw in the pull behind, which is a little different than the RV, um, where you'll, again, you'll have to have a vehicle to pull it behind, and you'll have your pull behind. And then we'll have the category for the SUV. Obviously, that's our form of living on the road, but we're just going to put it here as a category so that we can compare typical expenses of not just us, but anyone that would be living on the road in an SUV and kind of take a look at the basic expenses. Um, again, I'm looking at the basic expenses for all of these and I'll try to be conservative. So then we also have a couple of other forms I want to give credit to. Um, the motorcycle, the person biking, or maybe the person just walking, just backpacking around. You could technically have this as a form of living style as well. And there's obviously a lot of other ones in between. I'm not going to be looking at the expenses for this one, but I like to give credit to these forms. So I'll just be talking about these four at the top. And then on the side here is where I'll put expenses. And I've uh, 
I've come up with a couple of basic categories for expenses to compare the four of these. Um, they'll be the things that I will expect that you will have this cost. Um, let me just fix this up a little bit here, my lines. Um, we'll just get rid of this all together so that it doesn't uh, confuse matters. Okay, and with the SUV in our case, we also have a dog, so uh, that will be a part of our living style. And we also try to live on a budget, and we don't pay for camping, and so those kind of go into our living expenses. But let's go right in and look at the expense categories I've come up with that will mostly apply to each of these. So a home category. Everyone's going to have some expenses related to home, right? So you have a payment, you might have property taxes, uh, probably some form of insurance, what else? Uh, maintenance, of course, maintenance in some form. Um, other expenses related to home. How about the utilities? Some form of utility, um, probably an electric bill of some sort, an internet bill, maybe TV, water, trash. Um, and then for, again, for the SUV in our specific situation, and some of the others, camping will need to be a home expense if you're paying for camping. So, let me get the lines drawn in here so that we can sort of keep some order once I get the numbers going in here. There we go. Okay, now there's a car category here. All of these have a car. You probably would have a payment. You probably have registration, insurance, um, again, maintenance. Um, and then gas, a gas expense is going, if you're using the car, you'll have a gas expense. Uh, once again, get the lines in here so we can keep some order and organization. <clears throat> uh, oops. <laughs> and there we go. So for the last couple categories of expenses, um, I just kind of did the things that would be typical in most um, cases. So a phone bill. Most people have a phone bill, so I think that's fair. And let me fix this just a little bit so I can keep things straight. Um, other expenses would be food. We all eat, so I think we have a food bill. And a fun money uh, for any activities that you spend money on. Um, that's pretty common, too. And then an emergency and savings I put here. Get the lines in. And, yeah, some sort of emergency or savings expense. And then with that, that's all I have. So then we'll have a total, and I'll look at the total for the month and total for the year. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some numbers in now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the SUV category. And for home, this is pretty much going to be all zeroed out because we don't have any home-related expenses. You might have a camping expense. For us, it's a zero, so I will fairly put a zero here, even though some SUV lifers might have an expense. For car, payment about $200, $5 a month for registration, insurance about $100, and maintenance about $20, gas approximately $40 a month. I know it varies. These are averages. Phone, 70. Food, 300. <clears throat> um, fun money, $10 a month. Emergency and savings, $20 a month. Um, those are about what we pay for these different categories. And then that brings us to a total of $785 a month or $9,420 for the year for SUV life with those expenses. Um, now let's look at the pool behind. Now with this, you do have a home expense. Your home is the pool behind. So you might be have a payment of about $400 a month for that. Property taxes, no insurance, maybe about 50 a month on it, 50 for maintenance. <clears throat> I don't know if you have an electric bill. I'm going to say zero. I know some might. Let's say you pay for internet 50, TV 20, water and trash. I'm just going to zero that out and not include that, even though that might be an extra expense. And if you pay for camping, you're probably looking at about $300 a month. This is from people we've talked to and, and research. Car payment, $400. 5 for registration, 100 for insurance, 20 for maintenance, and 100 for gas. Your gas will be more, you're hauling something, and you probably have to have a truck. Phone, food, emergency. Let's keep those all the same across the board for each category, okay? So that there's no variation there. That brings the total to 1915 for the month or 22980 for the year. Okay, now let's do RV. Um, 
RV, let's say 600 a month for a payment. The RV obviously costs you a bit more property taxes. Again, zero insurance, let's say about 50 and 50, the same for maintenance um, as the pool behind. Nothing for electric again. Again, some people actually do pay some form of electric, but let's say no. 50 and 20 for internet and TV. And again, 300 a month for camping. Um, now let's look at the car category. You have a car you typically pull behind. So you have a car payment. Let's do 200, similar to our car payment. Let's assume that you could get a smaller car. A $5 registration, insurance of 100. Um, the maintenance, it might be a little more. Let's just put 20 though, to be fair, even though it could be a lot more. And gas of 150. We're going to do a little more in gas because, again, you have a car and the RV. And let's put the same for all the phone, food, fun, all that. Total of $1,970 or $23,640 for the year. Um, now let's look at traditional lifestyle. Not living on the road. You have a house payment. Fair number, $800 a month. $100 for property taxes. $50 for some form of insurance. $50 for maintenance. That's actually low. 50 for an electric bill, 50 for internet, 20 for water, um, or, well, let's actually make it zero, and let's just say 20 for the other uh, ones that we put for, before for internet, zero on everything else. We're thinking a, you know, a typical house, maybe a two-person living. Either way, you have a car payment. Let's say if you have two car payments of 200 that's $400, or maybe you have a car that's 400 Um 10 for registration if you have two cars in this case, 100 for insurance, let's just leave it at that, 40 for uh, maintenance, 60 for gas if you're commuting, and again, all the other ones stay the same for phone, food, fun, and ER. Um, $2,150 a month to get by in a traditional lifestyle. Um, we've verified this and talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people actually say they spend more than that. So I've been on rather on the conservative side for these estimates, um, and that's $25,800 a year to get by in traditional living. Now, what I have not talked about yet are all of the other expenses. Notice I do not have a category for, I mean, even for uh, fun money. I put $10 a month in. I mean, come on. You know most people spend more than that. Um, whether you're getting coffees, going to movies, going to out to get a beer, whatever. I really was on the conservative side here. Um, there's a lot of other numbers in the categories that I've tried to be fair on. So if you look at this and one number, you know, you think it's a little high... Please take note that in another category, I was very low, so it probably evens out. And the pool behind RV category, the numbers come out to be fairly, fairly close. Um, again, everyone's going to be different. This is an attempt at looking kind of at an average or typical expenses. And we've heard of people that spend much more than what we've put down here. So again, I think the numbers are fairly conservative. Um, notice that this is just the living expenses and you're not really doing much else. Uh, so I understand it depends, so bear with me. I had to come up with some sort of average numbers here uh, to compare. And so I do, though, I want to take note of some of those extra expenses because in all fairness, most people have some of these extra expenses. You know, these, these expenses add up and they're pretty common. So in all fairness, I want to at least mention them and shed light on them because a lot of people, a lot of people ask us, <clears throat> they'll say, how do you afford to live on the road? And often we're, you know, kind of laugh or taken back by the question because we think, well, we don't spend a lot of money, but then we realize that that's not the case for everyone living on the road. Um, in our special circumstances, we're trying to do this on a really low budget. I'm still obviously enjoying ourselves, but the main emphasis here is that we have cut out a lot of the expenses that would bog us down. And I want to show you here in a second, I want to show you how those expenses that seem small can add up and sort of squash your budget, whether you're living on the road or whether you're just trying to pay down debt in a traditional lifestyle. Take a look at some of these. And so let's take a look at some of those other costs. 
you know, the, the cigarettes, the coffee you need every morning, the family vacation cost, the student loan payment you have, and going to the gym, and you gotta afford makeup, or maybe you have to afford going to movies, skiing, the list goes on. There's lots of other expenses, and we've all incurred them in the traditional lifestyle. So I took an average cost for most of these categories, and I'll talk about each of them. And I tried to be conservative about them. I know that they range, and some of them are, can actually be more expensive than I averaged. And I took the amount, and I averaged it out for a 40-year span. Because most people in a traditional life uh, work from about 20 to 60-ish, you know, retirement. So that's 40 years of your life. So I can show you how much you're going to spend on these things over 40 years of your life. I'll warn you, the numbers are a little scary. So let's talk about coffee. If you enjoy your morning coffee, and let's look at some numbers here. Let's say you spend, you keep it kind of cheap and you get a $2 coffee. I think that's kind of cheap for coffee. Uh, you spend $2 and you get one five days a week. Gotta have one for that work day. That costs you about 10 bucks a week or $40 for the month. But you know, maybe you like a fancier coffee. The Starbucks, I think they're probably about four bucks a coffee for the fancier ones. Some are higher, I know. Uh, but at four bucks a coffee, you try to keep it cheap and you only get it three times a week. Four dollars, three times a week, still gonna cost you 12 bucks a week. And that's $48 for the month. That gives you an average of $500 a year on coffee. And at 40 years of your life, that's going to cost you $20,000. So for the price of your latte, you could afford to buy a brand new car. Or you could live on the road for four years. Trying to stay fit? How about that gym membership? Let's say your gym membership is about $10 a month. That's about $120 for the year. And 40 years of your life, that'll cost you $5,000. Again, that's a whole year of our budget on the road. Some people actually keep a gym membership when they live on the road, but we don't really want to do that because we hike anyway, so why pay the money? How about all those beauty products? You know, the hair care, makeup, and personal uh, toiletry products. Let's take a look at that. What's the price of beauty? Well, it depends. I know a lot of people uh, will spend various amounts on this, but I did an average of about 150 a month. I think most of you would agree that that's about what people spend on this. <clears throat> At 150 a month, that comes out to $1,800 for the year. So you'll spend about $1,800 a year. And again, for, a 40, for 40 years of your life, that comes out to $72,000 over the course of your life on looking good. Uh, makes it kind of not sound worth it. So $72,000, um, if you think about it, you could... You could go on about 36 flights at $2,000 a flight, which is a pretty good uh, flight, pretty good trip. You could go on 36 of those. So you could go see the world for the cost of your uh, looking good. And then on top of it, you could probably double this number because this is just taking into account those beauty personal care products. What about all the other accessories and shopping people do? We haven't talked about that yet. But you know, I need a new dress for my friend's wedding. I need a wallet or a new purse or I need a belt or whatever all those products that they add up easily add up to this, about the same number. And so you're at another $72,000, another 36 flights. You could go to 80 countries for the price of this stuff. Oh yeah, that's also 15 years on the road. Or if you take into account the double factor, that's 30 years on living on the road on a budget like ours. Let's say you have a smoking habit. As if you didn't need another reason to quit, let's crunch some numbers. Cigarettes. Now, it's a little tricky because the prices are all over the board. I know. 
I did the best I could at estimating based on uh, research. And um, I know the prices range from $6 to like $13 a pack. And I saw that the prices are going up and up and up. So um, it could range anywhere from $50 to $200 a week on average. Let's go with $50 at the lower end. I think that's reasonable. This is about a pack a day, which uh, is average. $50 a week, that's $200 a month on cigarettes and $2,400 a year. That comes down to almost $100,000 for a 40-year lifetime. $100,000. You could almost buy a house for that much. Um, you could live on the road for 20 years for that much. So that's a big one. It's nice to have a beer after work or sip a glass of wine, right? Well, this is what it's costing you. Let's say you spend $100 a month on alcohol, which is not hard to achieve from the price of some of the bottles I've seen. That's $1,200 for the year that you're spending on alcohol. And over 40 years, you'll spend $50,000 on getting tipsy. That's 10 years living on the road. Also, imagine how much debt you could pay down having that extra money sitting around. How about restaurants, eating out, bars, things like that? You can easily spend $100 a month going out to eat, going to bars, and just going out. That's $1,200 for the year. And at a 40-year lifespan, that's $48,000 or almost $50,000 that you would spend on eating out. That's 10 years living on the road on our budget. And imagine the amount of groceries you could buy for that much money. And how about that fun money? Most of us have a fun money budget and on average people easily spend $100 or more a month on fun money. I'm talking, you know, going to concerts, skiing, kayaking, buying new sporting equipment, going to sporting events, anything you do for fun. So $100 is really easy to hit. At $100 a month, that's $1,200 for the year. And over a 40 year lifetime, that's almost $50,000 on fun money. For $50,000, you could pay off your student debt pretty easily. And you could also live on the road for 10 years. You work all year and then it comes vacation. Finally, let's see how much it costs you. Well, the low end, people spend about $1,200 a year on vacation. It takes about $100 a month out of your budget. Uh, but actually, a lot of people spend more than that. I did a little research and found out that a family four's average vacation is actually about $5,000 for like a week or two vacation. That's the average people spend on going to Disney World, which apparently a lot of people still do that. So for that price, uh, you could actually be on vacation for the entire year on our budget, living on the road. Another tradition that many people spend lots of money on is a wedding. Let's look at those numbers. So, I did a little research and apparently, I was actually shocked by this, the average cost of a wedding is $35,000. And even on the low end, most people say they spend $20,000. $35,000 on average for the wedding. Oh my goodness. Um, and then in addition to that, there's the engagement ring, which is on average $6,000 apparently. Um, there's the wedding bands on average $2,000. And then of course the honeymoon, that's on average $5,000, which makes sense because there's at least a couple thousand probably in plane tickets. That comes out to almost $50,000 just to say I love you. And for that much money, you could go buy a van or a Jeep or you could live on the road for 10 years. And how about those pesky student loans? It's almost inevitable for us now, right? So that's costing people on average about $200 a month payments from everyone that I've spoken to. It sounds like on average $200 a month, which is about $2,400 for the year that you're paying student loans. And of course, a lot of that is floating away to interest, so you're hardly paying them down. If 
you cut out some of those other expenses that I've talked about, you could just pay this off and not let it all go to all that interest. So you could have your student loans paid off and not be paying that $2,400 a year and do something else like, say, live on the road. So now that we've discussed all of those potential other costs that most people likely have, let's look back at our figures and add that amount in. Now, if we consider about $1,000 more a month for various costs, I know some people do some of those things and not others, but on average, you're going to have to throw in another $1,000 a month just for a few of those expenses. That's actually more than $10,000, but I'm only going to add $10,000 to each of those different living styles just to keep it simple and, again, be conservative. So let's go back and add $10,000 to each of those and see what the budget looks like now. Okie doke, back to the drawing board. Um, let me get clear up some space here. I'm going to go ahead and add back some of that. Uh, if it's, it's actually be $12,000 a year, but let's look at uh, adding back about $1,000 a month. Or just to keep it simple, let's say $10,000 a year, even though it would actually be twelve. dollars um, we'll keep it lower. Again, trying to be as conservative as possible. Let me just move the totals up to the top um, so we have some space to work with. <clears throat> the RV. And then keep our lines here. The traditional living expenses. And you can see the totals here, like I said before. Um... And I'm going to add back in. Now, let's assume you have some of these expenses. $1,000 a month is really easy to get to from a collection of those other ones. We don't have it in our SUV life. If I add 1000 or 10000 to each of these, we'll get about thirty two, almost 33000 each for pull behind an RV. And about 36000 for traditional living. So, of course, if you, um, if you choose not to have those extra expenses in any of these forms of living like we have, uh, you can easily cut out that 1000 a month or, you know, $10,000, 12000 a year, maybe more in some cases. Um, and that tends to save you quite a bit. So when you look at these numbers for the uh, RV or the traditional lifestyle, um, I'm showing you what it would be if you have a lot of these extra expenses, and I am making the assumption that most people do have these. Um, when I have the SUV one, again, you if you do all that stuff, if you um, still have those expenditures, then you got to add at least a thousand a month to that. But again, in our case, we don't have those extra expenditures, and that makes a big difference. Now, there are a few other things for us that also make a difference too. So. On average, the numbers that are up there for SUV are about probably what most people would need to get by. Let's look at a couple of other special circumstance factors for us. Um, we no longer have the car payment. And the money that we've been saving and living simplistically, we have paid off the Great Escape. And we don't have a car payment. So that's another 200 a month savings. That makes our monthly expenditure actually go down. Um, to 585 and for the year it's closer to 7,000. Um, we've also been working uh, diligently on getting some of the other expenses down um, for food. <clears throat> we have decreased that. We try to be very thrifty, get things on sale. Um, we still eat pretty healthy. Um, but we've gotten our food bill down and so collectively we're actually looking at probably more about 6000 give or take, and in some months it's closer to 5000 so I can tell you that we're living approximately off of about 5000 or so um, for the entire year now. So there you have it, guys. For about $5,000 a year, we're getting by, living on the road, being able to travel, and do everything we love. And it's proof that you can do it too. And think about it, $5,000 is really not that much to make. Uh, you can see how we can easily get by on a seasonal job or a little gig here and there to make that money for the entire year. And as we live on the road, we're also getting more and more creative every day on ways to save money. Um, and we'll be sharing that with you guys as well. All our little tricks along the way that we've learned. 
Uh, in fact, this video is going to be a part of an entire series. We, we get this question so much and it's such an important part of what we're doing that we decided to make a whole financial series that we'll talk about uh, in addition to this video, the budget one. We'll talk about ways to make money on the road, ways to save money, and other tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. Um, as well as some other things that are very important. Um, in addition to the money side of this, I mean, this video obviously focuses on the money side. Very important. But you don't just save money living this way. You also save your time. And, you know, you could live in the traditional lifestyle and make tons of money and be a millionaire. Um, if that's your goal in life, then this lifestyle is obviously not for you. But if you're looking to actually, you know, focus on other things in life besides money and have time to do the things you love, and that's the key, time, um, that's what we're gaining living this way. We have all the time in the world now uh, by living on a budget uh, to do all the things that we love. I mean, we are learning so much. Um, we've talked about in other videos how we're able to put our time now towards volunteering, towards the things that we love, namely the environment. Um, we've been part of a lot of projects now um, for conservation efforts. And just also being out there and being in nature and being able to soak it up is super important. I mean, we believe in connecting and getting back to, to wilderness. Um, we would not have time to do that if we had to work a 40 plus hour week job. Um, obviously you can live on the road and you can spend a lot more money. That's fair. Uh, but again, then we'd have to make more money and we might have to spend our time, um, you know, well, we might have to get a more expensive vehicle that has more space so that we can work out of it. Um, we might have to spend more time in cities connected to Wi-Fi all the time. Um, in order to make those jobs work, and that's just not for us. So, if there's a lot of you out there that also want to live on the road on a budget and have that time to connect with nature or have that time to do what you love, hike, get in the mountains, spend more time with your loved ones, um, be with your dog more often, uh, whatever, you get the benefit of all that time from living this way. So I hope this gets you guys out there living on the road or living whatever dream it is that you have. Um, I know that there were a lot of details in it, and I hope you uh, were able to stay with me through the painstaking uh, numbers and details. But again, this is the heart of everything we do. This is how we're making it work. And uh, we really believe in it. This has made our dreams come true. And that's what we want for you guys too. So thanks for joining us again. And like I said, stay tuned. We'll have lots of other videos coming up in this whole financial series, hopefully to help you guys out along the way. And of course, lots of travel updates and other fun videos along the way to show you how we live on the road. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.